Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back my dear friends and students, uh, as you know um, it is a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening wherever you are and, and you are listening to this course and taking the part in this course. The, you know this is the DADM 2 which is data analysis and decision making 2 under the NPTEL MOOC series and the total uh, number of um, uh, hours is 30 which is basically 60 lectures because each lecture is a half an hour and it is spread over total course is spread over 12 weeks. And each week we have 5 uh, lectures after each um, week we have assignments and we are in the last lecture for the 7th week which is as you can see in the slide is the 35th lecture. And this course is under the NPTEL MOOC series and my name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department at IIT Kanpur in India. And if you remember uh, this, the, we are discussing about the topsis and we have just started by considering that there are 11 parameters or criteria based on which a person is planning to buy a house, houses uh, are given as um, A1, A2, A3, A4 are the alternatives and the criteria those 11 one are from C1 to C11 and if you remember we have those points or the criteria matrix for each and every alternative. So, these are not normalized, we will normalize them accordingly. So, consider that we normalize them and what normalization we are using. If you look this, let us look at these two blue points. So, this is 0 0.5964 and 0 0.6471. So, if you go back to the last class, the slides. So, they were basically being normalized, you can use the concept of either the, the column or the row. So, I am basically doing it along the row. So, the first value was 40, 40 square, 42.9 square, 62.5 square, 6.8 square, 1.3 square, 0.8 square, 0 square, 1.2 square, 1.8 square, 4.2 square, 2.2 square. So, from where did these values come? Look at R3, 2. So, this is the space for the 3 comma 2 cell that means I am considering the third alternative and the second row. So, the second row values were this which I said at the squares. Now, uh, the so okay so my, my mistake it would be basically the third row my mistake sorry because 3 is basically the third alternative and 2 was basically the the cell value which was 42.9 which is here, I will just mark it. I will I will use a different marker here, so it will be easy, sorry, sorry for that. So, this is yellow, this is yellow, this is orange, this is orange. So, it will be easy for us to find out. Then the value of 3, 2 would be given. So, if it is 3, 2, so 42.9, 42.9. So, I calculate these values. When I go to 4, 8, again I will consider the 8th column and the 4th row. Row means the 4th alternative. The values are given 41.7, I am not mentioning the square values. 25, 78, 7.8, 10.6, 2.3, 1.8, 1.9, 3. 3.2, 3.8, 1.3. So, these are the accrued values which are coming from each and every criteria to each and every alternative. 11 criteria, 4 alternatives. So, the third value is basically coming from the sense I am considering the 8th column. So, let me see what is the 8th value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this is 3 is 8, I would use a different color. Let me use the light green. 3 with 3 here. So, with this you calculate all the values, best would be just put it in the excel sheet and calculate. So, so once you have this, 
now I consider the weights. So, the weights are I am I am for this problem I am considering for each and every criteria starting from 1 to the 11th one are point I am only reading the two places of decimal 0 0.11, 0 0.10 which is about 11 percent, 10 percent, the third one is again 11 percent, fourth one is 9 percent, 11 percent, 6 percent, 6 percent, 11 percent, 9 percent, 6 percent, 5 percent. So, that means uh, what is the weightages for each and every uh, criteria amongst themselves. So, the double check the sum should be 1 as it, as it is. Now, what I will do is that I will I'll, I'll now given the, uh, the normalized matrix which is R capital R and I have already explained how the normalization was done, whether the rows or the columns are being used, you can interchange them there is no issues. But remember the, the R matrix which will be multiplied by W is of size M cross N which is 4 cross 11 here and the size of the matrix which is W would be 11 cross 11. So, this is the value. So, once I multiply uh, them I have I am not going to this, this, this was not possible in a one slide. So, I have given the actual value of V which is V is equal to if you remember I will again write I am sure you remember but still for the sake. So, V was basically uh, 4 cross 11 was being calculated from R which is 4 cross 11 into W which was 11 cross 11. So, the value of V is given here. Now, if I want to find out each and every uh, cell value, so I, I have only highlighted I can use the blue color, no I will not use the blue color, yellow would be better. So, I will basically highlight this value which is here. So, how did I calculate? I took this is V211 which means I am taking the second alternative and the 11th criteria that means the second row and the 11th column. So, the values are given. So, this 0 0.5622, 0 0.4629 and so on and so forth till the last one which is 0 0.37 were already calculated normalized values for the vector R or the or sorry I mean the matrix R. So, that you multiplied with the last column for the weight if you remember the last value was 0 0.058 which is about 5 percentage weightage being given to the 11th criteria. So, all the other cells were to be 0. So, if you multiply the value comes out to be 0 0.0215. So, based on that you have the matrix V. Now, given matrix um, uh, V, now our actual calculation will start. So, let us pause here. The V values gives us the weightages which are corresponding to each and every criteria and the normalized overall accrued value which is coming out from each and every criteria on each and every alternatives. That means, they are normalized on a scale of 100 or 1. That means, on a scale 1, what is the value which each criteria is giving to each alternative that was one. Then we multiplied by the weightage corresponding to the fact that the weightage would give you the importance level among the criteria themselves. So, once I multiply I am merging both these two concept. One is the weightages among the criteria and one is the valued accrued from each, each criteria to the each alternative. So, now I have so called made a ranking corresponding to the fact of the criteria and the alternatives. Now, this v, v matrix would be utilized. Now, if you remember I have to find out the, the V plus values and the V minus values for each and every um, uh, this uh, concepts of the um, columns which are the, the criteria. So, it, if, if you are more normal remember one thing which I did not mention in the last lecture for which I ap apologize. So, when you are trying to find out the V plus or the V minus remember in which direction you are doing the normalization. If it is along the rows, so you will find out the V plus for the rows. If you are doing along the columns, you will find out the V plus for the columns. Similarly, for the V minus. So, here we did normalization uh, corresponding the fact for each row was taken because there were 11 elements in the denominator, 11 elements squared and thing being added and then find out the square root. So, if I have this 
I try to find out the maximum. So, I give you two only examples to make you understand. So, let me again highlight it. So, I highlight the first value with the first value. I highlight the second value with the second value. So, what was 0 0.669? If I take the maximum of all the um, uh, values which were there corresponding to the fact. So, I have say for example, for the first um, this alternative, I have 11 values, they are starting from 0 .0, 0 0.0609 until the value of 0 0.055. So, I am taking the maximum that for each and alternative. So, the maximum is coming out to 0 0.0669. Similarly, go to V2 plus, it is the maximum for all these four values. So, you have to consider um, the columns. So, so, there are basically four values in each, each column. So, first column which is criteria 1, four alternatives. Second column, second criteria, four alternatives. So, once you find out, you will have basically such 11 values and each being the maximum of the 4 values. Remember that because that can be reversed depending on, on the concept of the normalization you, you are utilizing. Similarly, I go to the V minus, here in the V minus I take the minimum, remember that max minimum is coming. So, uh, when I do that, I try to find out the, the V min and the V mean values again what I am doing is that I am again taking one column at a time and in each column there are four values. So, the four values are corresponding to alternative 1, 2, 3, 4 and how many columns are there? They are 11 that means for each criteria I rank the alternatives amongst each other on the weighted uh, scale. What is the weighted scale? Again I am repeating that was the multiplication of the R matrix with each and every uh, row, uh, row for the R matrix with the columns of the, uh, the W matrix corresponding to the fact that R was the normalized values accruing from each and every criteria to each and every alternatives point 1 and point number 2 was that the weights gave, gave us the level of importance among the criteria themselves. So, once you have this the V i values are given which are minimum. So, again I will color it in for ease of understanding this is the first value gives us the first value, the second value gives us the second value. Similarly, the third, fourth and so on and so forth we can be found out. So, they would be technically V1 to Vn, I am not talking about the minus sign because it will be plus for the positive values. So, V1 to Vn basically we will have such 11 values. Now, once you have that, you want to basically find out the distance of each project or each um, or project means the alternatives to the most positive ideal solution. Similarly, you find try to find out the distance of each GMD of alternatives from the most negative ideal solution. So, once you do that, I, am, I have the same formula for S plus it will be the difference of the, of the distance. Now, here you see this is basically the concept which is coming is the distance is basically the L2 norm which is the Euclidean distance which you have talked about. It can be changed depending on what type of problem you are trying to do. So, it will be the difference between each and every cell value with the, uh, the, the maximum to find out the most positive ideal solution. Square it, sum it up and find out the square root such that you are giving one criteria for the S1 plus which comes out to be 0 0.1045. If you do the calculations, you can find out. So, if there are um, uh, Vj plus Vj's would basically be for each and every rows we had the maximum values. So, if you find it out, the values are coming out to be 0 0.1045 and highlight them. This once I am I am I am requesting you once you have that matrix, remember that I am again going slowly. Once you have the matrix for the value of x, normalize it, be careful what normalization you are using, also be careful what is the normalization you are using in which direction, row or column. Once you do that, have a, have a understanding that what is the weights. Remember the size of um, x should be m cross n, size of um, uh, value of r which you when you, which is a normalized matrix corresponding to the fact that you are getting it from x also should be m cross n, 
m is the number of alternatives n is the number of criteria similarly the weight matrix would be n cross n so once you find out um, s uh, or once you want to find out v sorry v which is the matrix would be size m cross n multiplied by n cross n which is m cross n once you have that you basically find out the positive value which is the ideal solution negative value which is the ideal solution but these being from the positive sense and the negative sense so once you have that you will basically find out you will basically find out the values of v pluses values which are the max for the positive sense and v uh, minus or uh, would be the min from the negative sense and then i also mentioned that you can find out the mean for the max also and uh, mean for the not for the max mean for the positive distance and max for the negative distance so once you have that you find out the most positive ideal solution and most negative ideal solutions which are given as this and use the color scheme as si plus is given s i s s 1 plus is given s 2 plus is given which is for the first and the second alternative similarly s 3 plus for the third alternative and s 4 plus for the fourth alternative so remember this color scheme orange yellow green blue i will come to that within few minutes so now i do the most negative uh, solution so negative solutions i already have the v minuses which is here i am not going to mark it so once i find out the v minuses again i find out the dis uh, difference of the distance square them up sum them up find out the square root again i am trying to follow the l2 norm so once i have them i basically have the s1 minus s2 minus s3 minus s4 minus in the negative sense the negative ideal solutions or distances for the first second third fourth alternative so let them mark that orange for the first as I did for SI plus, yellow for the second as I did for the S2 plus, green for the third as I did for the S3 plus, blue for the fourth as I did for the S4 plus. So there is a reason for that why I am doing that. So you have found out SI plus values 1, 2, 3, 4 for 4 alternatives. I found out SI minus for 1, 2, 3, 4 values, 4 alternatives. These are basically the maximum and the minimum distance corresponding to the fact that I am using the concept of ideal distance, how far or how close it is. Now you want to find out the relative proximity. So on the relative proximity index for each and every alternative would be how close or far is it on a scaled value. So, the scale value now if here again I repeated one thing um, in I did mention and did draw that in the last class which I will try to again highlight it here on once again. So, I find out the relative proximity of index for each alternative which is that buying of that house to the ideal solution. So, what is the ideal solution whatever I have found we will find out how close or far it is and I will basically try to rank them accordingly. So, I am only taking if you remember I mentioned 4 columns that means for the max case for the positive, min case for the positive, then I do it for the mean case for the negative and max case for the positive. So, now again listen to me carefully, max case for the positive means closer the distance is better that means it is absolutely essential that I am, I am at that point of the ideal solution. So, higher it is good. If I go to the second column, what I have said, I was basically mean of the uh, distances. So, when I am taking the mean of the distances is basically I am going as far as away, away from the positive solution. That means, it is positive, but I am slowly trying to do, go away such that it will not accrue to me that high, higher value. When I go to the third column concept is basically mean of the negative values. That means, how far I am with respect to the negative solution. So, if you take the first and the third column, if both the values are high, high in the sense max value high, mean value be as low as possible, that is the best combination. That means, it is a win-win situation in both the cases. I am winning, that means in the first case, that means I am closer to the positive solution and it is mean for the third column, which is I am as far as away from the negative solution. The worst case scenario is, 
the second column and the fourth column. That means, I am minimum from the uh, I am as far as away from the positive solution and I am as close as possible to the negative solutions, which is the worst case. And the other two cases, which are the combination for the first and the, the third and first and say for example, the fourth and the second and the third would give me a combination which I have to basically rank. So, these things I am not included, but I am again repeating it uh, not to make it too much complicated. So, you have the uh, solution. So, I have basically C1, C2, C3, C4. So, these S values were already given. So, if you remember this, I will I'll highlight it. Now, let me do, do, let me do the writing again. So, whatever I have said, if I write it down, it will be easy for us to understand. So, there were again four columns when I mentioned. So, let me mention them as positive solution, negative ideal solution. So, this is the column where I have divided them into two parts. Then under each I divide into two parts. What are these? So, let me talk. When I use the positive solution, I am using a max when I am using the negative, I am using a min. I am using the same color scheme, remember. When I use the the min for the for the PS. I use the light green and when I use the max for the NIS, I use the dark red color. Now, all these things would give me the combinations. Combinations are there are 1, 2 here and there are 2 each here. So, there will be 4. So, I am only using one of them. I can do the relative ranking and give a much better picture. Some would be very difficult to differentiate because if you take the first and the uh, see for example, the first and the first here that means first and the third would give you the best solution, second and the fourth will give you the worst solution. Any combination of first with respect to say for example, fourth and considering second with respect to third will give me an intermediate solution. So, what I am trying to do is that uh, here wh what is coming out here is this one. So, I will mention it as first A, first B, second A, second B. So, the combinations can be done accordingly. The values of C1, C2, C3, okay, this should be C4, sorry for that. I will change it here. So, the values are coming out to be as it is given. Just pay, it no, no, pay attention here. So, C 1 is 0.36, I am only reading the two decimals. C 2 is 0.23. C 3 is 0 0.30, C 4 is 0 0.68. Once you have that, you can find out the values corresponding to that. Now, once you are done, the ranking values would give that uh, when you rank this uh, C 1, C 2, C 3, 4, C 4 corresponding the max for the positive and mean for the negative, then you have C 4 is better than C 1, is better than C 3, which is better than C 2. Hence, it will mean the alternative 4 is the best, which is in position 1. That is the house where you are trying to buy, depending on the 11 um, uh, criteria. Alternative 1 um, uh, is the second one, which is second position. Alternative 3 is in the third position, third one. And finally, alternative 2 would be in the position 4. Now, the ranking which you have used. Now, this is the simple step which I followed for the problem. Ranking which you have used was for max min again I am repeating that means first and third. Similarly, I can get three different other um, uh, ranking system based on 
the second and the fourth which is also quite easy to understand the things would would basically be difficult to make a judgment would be the case when i am considering the second and the third and when i am considering basically the first and the fourth based on that one i am doing so with this i'll i'll end the top six method discussion and this is the end of the seventh week which is the 34th fifth lecture and um, you will only have assignments based on the concept of topsis and from next uh, week which is the eighth we will start the other different multi criteria decision making and, and hope any queries which you have you can basically put in the forum and we will definitely try to answer or the TAs would definitely try to answer as soon as possible. Have a nice day and thank you very much for your attention.